Okay, hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about the sacrum and how to treat the sacrum, um, how to mobilize it, how to get it to be sort of a, a source of power and um, in Eastern philosophy, your sacral chakra is the center of your creative and passionate energy. And it's true. Okay. Um, so movement should sort of originate from your sacrum and it should help guide your hips and shape your hips. Um, it's got a lot to do with your sense of calm or anxiety and your breathing. And we'll go through why. Um, it's got a lot to do with healing. It's got a lot to do with blood flow. It's got a lot to do with reproduction, sexual health, sexual fun. <laughs> um, hip movement, it's like a big deal. Okay, so it's very, very common um, to injure our sacrum through mm, modern life. Okay, we sit a lot. Um, a lot of people fall on their tailbone or fall on their coccyx. Um, some people just sit a hell of a lot. I mean, your kids at kindergarten are sitting from the age of four hours and studying at desks and stuff. And so we can really wreck our posture through our sacrum. So we're gonna kind of talk about sacral mobilization, sacral health, how to set it up, um, how to not let it influence and bully your posture and especially this is really relevant for people who've had a tailbone injury like fallen on their ice, fractured their sacrum, hurt their tailbone, um, a lot of hip injuries and, and it's kind of common in, in triathletes. You get sacral stress fractures and, and sort of hip impingement syndromes and a lot of it's got to do with that there's not this sort of understanding of how your sacrum works. So anyway, George here is going to show you some key things. So this is the sacrum okay that's your that wedge of bone hang on let's get that in the new camera this wedge of bone here okay like it uh, um it is not like it is exactly like a triangle <laughs> again at the bottom is your coccyx and you can see it's sort of shaped this way in some people it, it's pretty darn straight and their whole spine is straight but you can kind of like feel the back of your head and if you've got a curvy back of the head and if you've got a curve in your lower back or if you put your hand on your sacrum and it's curvy then it's supposed to have a curve okay so what happens is, let's say you're sitting here and you knock your, you, you, you just sit a lot or you fall and you land on that sacrum. What very often happens is that tailbone gets sort of knocked in, okay, your tailbone goes in and your sacrum will end up being kinked like this. And once your tailbone's in, there's two things, your, your for healthy posture, your pelvic floor should be horizontal, okay, your diaphragm should be horizontal. Yeah, horizontal and horizontal and those two will talk to each other so they should be sort of go up and down with breath and what happens is when you when you sort of mostly for for people with a curvy spine the default is this sort of kinks what happens is your pelvic floor starts going in that direction right and um, also again like if you knock your tailbone in the span between your pubic bone your pubic bones is come on George <laughs> There's pubic bones in the front, okay, and your tailbone's at the back. That gets narrowed, so your pelvic floor is now narrow and tilted. Um, pelvic floor, when it's relaxed, is very, very good for your parasympathetic nervous system and a sense of calming down. When it's short and tight, it it um, it can increase your well, you decrease your ability to downregulate and calm down. And then also remember now it's sort of at a different angle and it's not talking to your diaphragm and your diaphragm and your vagus nerve you have a sort of you don't have a great relationship between the two so it's um how do we sort of start and sort this out and you need to sort of understand what's going on the other thing is if this tailbone is kinked forward this way it's almost like you know your hips need to go back when you're running in hip extension almost because the tailbone is going that way and tucked in like your tail's tucked in under your legs too much it's against extension. And so you find people that have fallen on the tailbone or got a restricted tailbone like this, it's a mechanical block to hip extension. And so people with that tend to really battle to stride out behind them and it throws their legs forward and underneath them. And what they'll do is they'll be very kneesy and they always wanna run in front. Um, it's, it's common someone that's really fallen on the tailbone, their knee actually won't get behind their hip in running gait. I know it sounds incredible, you can't think you can run like that, but you, they'll land in front and run about here, they'll pick their foot up. And they'll actually have no extension and you know the better the better runners have a lot of hip extension so much so that their back leg almost goes dead straight and then they toe off and push through um short sacrum you sort of end up riding bicycle running okay the other thing is, is it kinks your spine so short sacrum this will bend in you, you compress your lower back so you'll have a, like a duck butt and a real archy back and whatever goes on down here is going to go up over here so as soon as your sacrum dives in and crunches your neck will lock 
and then we're stuck in this your things that should be horizontal like the base of your neck the top of your shoulders your diaphragm and your pelvic floor are no longer horizontal so very typically you'll have a, a pelvis tilted forward and back um, because your your back is arched your diaphragm will be in this direction <laughs> okay and then your shoulders in this direction and your neck sort of king so you've got these zigzags through your body you can't stack your body and again ultimately when you stand you should have a sense that you're um, you're balancing on your pelvis like, and your spine floats out of your pelvis that's how to be healthy okay so that's the preamble <laughs> now how do we fix it you want to we're going to put our sacrum on the on the floor and we just you want to rock it and gain sort of mobilize it there's there's layers of fascia that wrap around that sacrum and your thoracolumbar spine and you need to sort of mobilize it relax it these big red muscles here okay you've got um, a liacus that big red muscle um, it inserts onto you no, it doesn't. It inserts into your lesser trochanter on the inside here, okay? And then you'll see these little red dots. That's your psoas muscle. And iliopsoas, it's one muscle, but it has two functions. Um, your psoas attaches your femur to your spine, and the ligus attaches your hips to, to your femur. And what happens is often when, you know, those, if your, your sacrum, not in this picture, but generally your ligus actually has fibers that goes onto the front of your sacrum. And this whole pelvic bowl has got to relax. And that's also one of the reasons it's so strongly linked to flexion and extension of your hips. Um, it's because the light gets actually inserts onto your sacrum and certainly through the sacral fascia. So we want to, the visualization is when we're lying on our back, we're going to take our sacrum and we're going to roll it. Uh, we're going to do pelvic clock. So 12 o'clock, um, 6 o'clock, rock it this way and that way. And also side to side, nine o'clock to three o'clock, and then we're going to draw circles with our sacrum. And what we want is a sensation that that sacrum starting to relax and open up, and that these muscles which are grabbing your pelvic bowl, your hips start to open up and soften. And then we want to start getting hip mobilization. This pairs really, really well with um, pelvic floor work. And I'll do a pelvic floor session on here where we contract and relax our pelvic floor and start talking to the breathing. Um, you can, once you get a sense of these gentle sacral movements and mobilizing, and you're basically using the floor to open up and mobilize your sacrum and to get those, your sacral joints should work like this and your sacrum should counter rotate inside those joints. Once that frees up, <laughs> um, it feels pretty calming and relaxing. It'll really open up your hips, you find access to your glutes, your hip power, the whole things will start. Your psoas relaxes, it's good for your digestion. And again, um, down regulating, calming down, slowing your breath down. You, sh you know, people with, um, it's very, very common for people to tell before to have tight shoulders and a tight diaphragm. So everything's up. Okay, and get you out of that up position. Okay. Um, so that's the one focus. The other focus is trying to think about like almost like the direction of your pelvic floor. So between sacrum and pubic bone, is that horizontal? And you're just practicing being in a horizontal place with no stress. And tissues will start to fall into place. You'll start to think, your brain will think, oh, well, that's more normal and easier. You've got to believe that your body wants to heal. Okay. So we do a lot of that. And we'll, we'll show you the different moves. But the layer is mobilize your sacrum, pelvic clocks, anti-pelvic clocks. <laughs> yeah. Learn ease, learn softness, spend five, ten minutes a day doing that. And then slowly fight your way out of the corner. And you always want to associate, um, if you can get your, once you've relaxed your sacrum, put awareness into your sacrum, mobilize your sacrum, then take that knowledge or take that awareness and then try and get that movement up your spine so that that mobility has somewhere to go because otherwise if you just treat this in an isolated part you're going to get into trouble okay so starting out we're going to line up back okay with your knees bent you probably want to bend your knees quite a lot just until you feel that your sacrum's on the ground so for me like if i slide out here i'm going to just feel where does my sacrum feel like it's connected mostly on the ground and it's around about here and my back's a little bit arched off the floor yours can be mega arched or flat into the back don't worry about your back and pressing it just get a sense that my sacrum I'm in the middle of my sacrum on the floor whatever that is for you okay and so you want to spend about two or three minutes just rocking forward and back okay so this way and then this is my sacrum top to bottom 12 o'clock to six o'clock and nice and slowly if you're an athlete you're going to want to whip it this way and whip it that way and do it fast because <laughs> you run at 180 cadence <laughs> okay slowly one two three one two three and just mobilize your sacrum up and down and once you've got a clear imprint and just 
do this again and again the front of your hip should be soft it's very common for people with splinted and guarded they'll use this six pack and the head will want to come out to do this movement and it's they don't know how to do this softly you shouldn't feel your butt tensing you shouldn't feel your glutes engaging your muscles should melt away just visualize the bones that bony skeleton that i have okay and you're gonna do thing again the head into the street and you're just gonna rock it that way then we're gonna go side to side so i'm just letting this hip fall down fall down rocking from side to side okay and i can arch my back a little bit more or i can move my legs around a little bit more just to get there if i bring my feet closer to my butt i feel like my sacrum is rocking from side to side there is a sense of mobilization right once i've done that for about two minutes then i can do be slow be relaxed don't be in a rush when you do this now i'm drawing circles i'm going round the clock one way and then round the clock the other way so that's a great warm-up. You, you spend sort of two minutes on, on each. And that's a total of eight minutes. <laughs> and that's a great first attempt. What we're going to do, though, is we always want to try and relate this to movement. So what we're going to do is we're going to go tilt our... I've got to think about this. We're going to tilt our tail under this way, okay? Flattening my lower back onto the floor. So rocking my second down to the 12 o'clock position and get a sense that your knees go away. Okay, so arching my back and pressing my sacrum into the floor, turning my tail under, flattening my back and your knees go away. And just see if you can get that sense. Because here's your, if your belt buckle drags up, up, you're using your psoas. And if you can turn your pelvis under and knees going away, you're learning to soften your elicus. And remember, elicus is crucial for sacral health. Okay. Um, so pelvic clocks for Two minutes side to side, two minutes up and down, two minutes one way, two minutes the other way, two minutes arching back, and then press your thighs, get your knees to go away nice and softly as you turn your tail under. Okay, so that's a beginner routine for about a week or two weeks. Just do that and walk around and see if that feels a whole lot better. Okay, as you get better with that movement, you're gonna find probably if you put your feet up on something on like a figure four, and in, in sort of sorry, um, in this position, so my feet are on the chair you'll find that you can target your sacrum a little bit more. You can do the same routine. You can also take a sock and put it under your sacrum and rest your sacrum on the sock or a, a firm squishy ball. <laughs> Again, you can go side to side, up and down, circles one way, circles the other way. And you can use a sock to mobilize your sacrum. In this position, be careful that your abductors aren't tight. Abductors go straight to your lycus, so you might want to hold your knees together okay don't squeeze a ball don't create tension you're not trying to strengthen anything you're trying to release and open up and soften at this stage okay so you can hold your knees together and do that movement your ductus must be soft okay um, if you if you sort of out in this position using your ductus to hold your knees up there's tension and that tension gets into your alaga so you almost want a sensation you're holding your knees in or gently not knee okay um, and also you can put your feet against the floor the feet against the wall you can rock your sacrum and side to side and sort of mobilize it and mobilize it once you finish that really good idea long back you're doing there you can just rotate it from one side to the other and just again as your sacrum is opening up your spine's lengthening up stack the horizontal so just looking left and right and starting to relax your neck is a really 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 good idea opening up the back of your neck um, there's a video on so releasing your jaw, you put your fingers in your mouth and jaw and neck release and allow that horizontalness to go somewhere. Okay. At this stage as well, you can start adding rounding and arching breathing. So I breathe in through my nose, arch my spine, breathe out through my nose, try and connect my ribs to my hips. So breathing in, breathing out. Okay, I promise you, if you fall in hard in your butt or if you have this sort of asymmetrical thing you're probably going to breathe reciprocally the wrong way around you'll want to arch and breathe out or you'll be stuck in your breath okay so breathing in the easy way to remember this is the bellows so here's my hand here's my other hand breathe in the bellows gets bigger sucking air in breathe out around and you can practice this in different positions so here i'm kneeling breathing in out arch round and you're letting that movement get up into your pelvis and starting to learn to undulate your spine. Okay, so that's, that will be a progression for your sacrum. And as you, you actually want to feel your posture change. You want to feel your hips in the front should be flat and muscular and horizontal. 
not like a mouth and not tilted. If you look at you, like my pants should be horizontal, <laughs> not tilted forward. Okay. A lot of people walk around with duck back and duck duck butt <laughs> or tilted pelvis and think that's normal. And it's um, and some people maybe, but you want to reduce it and soften it and 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 not be painted into the corner and just see if this opens up and creates a new world for you. Okay, so that's the basics of sacral mobilization and why you want to do it. And again, in your posture, head on top of shoulders, shoulders on top of hips, spine should float out of this horizontal, 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 horizontal. And meditating in this position that I'm in now, or getting a cushion and sitting on a cushion in this position is very, very good to horizontalize your pelvis. And I love, if your knees can handle it, doing breathing work and mobilizing in this position because your pelvis is now way more horizontal when you kneel, okay? So I know my face is out of picture, but when I stand, it's, your pelvis is likely to tilt. And when you kneel, you'll take your adductors out of the equation and your hamstrings out of the equation, you'll end up horizontalizing your pelvis. And so again, we can start. <laughs> Let me try and get my face in there. So the algorithm, you know, if you don't see my face, you won't press the like button or some shit. Yeah. So now you're going to, there's my pubic bone, there's my sacrum. You're going to start drawing circles with your sacrum. So you can go anti-clockwise, <laughs> clockwise. So imagine there's a paintbrush drawing on the, on the floor with my sacrum, my awareness in my sacrum. You can put your hand on your sacrum, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Okay. Um, then figure of eight is very, very important. So round the front, fall back in the middle, round this way, fall back in the middle, round fall back round, swap directions out, come through in the middle, fall back in the sides. Um, I'm exaggerating so you can see on the camera, but you want to do those figure of eights in both movements. Okay, the progression of that up your, up your body would be to do in cat cow, okay? So the same thing, look, these same themes coming through. Okay, with my sacrum, I'm going to try and cat cow. So I'm thinking about my sacrum being a paintbrush, I'm going to paint up the wall and then I'm going to paint down the wall. So I'm cat-cowing with my sacrum. This movement comes from my sacrum. Okay, sacrum first, head last. Sacrum, head. Sacrum puts my head down. Learn the tail must wag the dog. Okay, so your sacrum needs to create that movement. Okay, um, and then also if you've been doing your pelvic clocks, you can start drawing circles with your sacrum one way and the other way. You can link that to taking your belly button and drawing a circle with your belly button. So imagine you, your belly button is going to do this, like a circle. So I'm going to go round with my belly button. As soon as I've got that movement, I'm going to stop and I'm going to think, I can do that movement by painting um, from my sacrum. So now I'm not thinking, my belly button is doing the exact same rounding, but the movement is coming from my sacrum. Does it make sense? So, you're trying to move your whole spine, including your head, and it's all coming from your sacrum. Okay, so that, that's a fantastic series of, of um, sacral mobilizations. And you might find you have to start on pelvic clocks and be patient and sit there, and then you can progress them to knees up, bent up, and then to the kneeling one, and then to moving. You might, you know, human nature, you're gonna to wanna to do the last cool exercise first. <laughs> uh, you might, might take you a couple of weeks just to get there. Okay, but just, if you've got pelvic floor issues, incontinence, um, oh, sexual pain, sexual dysfunction, um, chronic just problems in this area, pain in your sacrum, pain in your tailbone, if you've injured your tailbone, say you went snowboarding and you whacked the living daylights out of it and you're not feeling good, you slipped a banana peel and things aren't going great. This is a great, you know, just stick to it, spend five to 10 minutes on it every day and have the discipline and make the time for it and you'll start your whole body and your posture will change. It's extraordinary. And you know, your shoulders will relax, your breathing relaxes. It's, it's just like restoring life to your whole body. Okay, if you've got problems, please comment and let me know and I'll modify it and I'll do some other sacral stuff and sacral moving up spine stuff and, and hip coordination. Okay, much love and respect. Thank you. Share this with someone that needs the help and look after yourselves, everyone, and take care and move with passionate, creative energy. Okay, take care.